Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off metal video, we're going to become masochists for the day. Only joking. I mean, if that's your thing, then I will king shame you. But today's build is going to be something unique that not many people tend to talk about. Utilizing Tommy's matchbook and Storm Dancer's Brace, we're creating a build that is capable of enhancing our super damage and the ability recharge rate while critically low on health. This is something that actually benefits a lot of users as it can be done multiple times and make the entire thing to build quite lethal in a number of content. Of course, it's highly risky to use and does pose a number of threats to users, but on the right hand, it's quite an experience to go through. To start, you're going to want to have Arc Soul, where casting your Rift will grant you and allies a Arc Soul, while amplified your Arc Souls fire faster. Then you want Electric Stack in Mind, where defeating a target with Arc Abilities or defeating a jaw target creates iron traces. Collecting traces make you amplified. At first, I wasn't going to use Arc Souls as I thought it would make the build too dependent on them, but after using them and trying them in areas that had a lot of enemies nearby, the following worked out very well and supporting Tommy's effects. This, along with Electric Stack in Mind, allowed me to not only become amplified much faster without needing to lift a finger, but also be able to create iron traces while on the go, which also improved the ability regen all round. It works out a lot more in my favour compared to not having it available. For the fragments, Spark of Resistance, where while surrounded, you are more resistant to incoming tag by 40%. Spark of Recharge, where while critically wounded, your grenade and melee energy regenerate quickly. Spark of Instinct, where while critically wounded, taking damage emits a burst of damaging jolt, and Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets. Although less damage resistance abilities would make the build more functional, you don't want the build to be too weak where you can't survive 2-3 to three hits. You want to have Spark of Resistance and Electric Armor Seasonal Mod so that when you do reach critical health, any damage after that won't be too lethal or a death center for some. This is where Spark of Instinct and Recharge will kick in the most, as this can be used and abused multiple times as long as your health is at critical. If you follow what I have shown, you are less likely to die from one shot hits compared to not having the following. For the mods and stats section, both discipline and intellect are the key stats to invest in the most here, while resilience is also a likely stat to invest in if you want to make sure your critical health section takes a small amount of hits as possible. At tier 7 for discipline, we'll be able to produce our grenades at a fast rate with front of focus added, so you can get a tier 10 stat easily. As we have Ionic Tracers available, that will also top up our ability regenerative play, but this won't be the main way of us getting energy back fast. The Spark of Recharge on top of Front of Focus passively regens our grenades at a surprisingly good rate, and though it's not like Ion Traces in terms of the amount it gives back, the recharge rate is what ultimately sells it towards the user. Now, I don't know, the Bomber mod also helps here and there, but this is optionally down to the user. Intellect, we have all that tier 7 as well. However, we'll also be using Front of Wisdom to boost the stat to tier 10 as well. A super already has a low cooldown rate compared to other supers, so this along with Acid to Acid and Storm Dancer's super refund effect means that you can get your super back every few minutes. This is great as you can then make use of the Thunderous Retort mod for that extra super damage on top of what you currently have and truly be a wrecking force. My resilience is only at tier 5 simply because I cannot increase it no more, but with the fragments and mods available, that will increase my damage reduction while amplified. This should be enough to cover some of the main basics of the build. For the armor charges, to retain the following system we have in play, charged up will allow us to hold on to more armor charges by plus one, while having this solo siphon mod for creating all the power via our weapons and firepower mod for creating all to your charge grenade kills can also help elevate the following area. However, having a reaper mod can also help gain all the power each time you use your rift and get a kill, and this will be common with how often our rifts regenerate quite fast. This, along with x2 solo weapon surge mod, x1 arc surge mod, and the time dilation mod, means that we can retain the strength of a weapon by near 100%. Now, lastly, the weapons being used will be Tommy's matchbook, although touch of madness can also work. Tommy's is a nice weapon to use for the following setup, as not only do you build up scorched damage the longer you find the weapon, but also the weapon will gradually increase the damage the longer overheat is active. This works in our favour, as the solo weapon surge mod plus the following buff makes it nuke champions and bosses fairly well. If you get the catalyst for it, you'll also be able to recover your health back fast as well, which is beneficial for how the entirety of the build will work. 
Of course, Touch of Malice is a great weapon to also pick and use here for the following setup. However, Tom is a bit more of a risky case to use compared to what Tommy's does. With Tommy's, it will always hit a critical health and no more, which means that we can activate whatever ability we need and go from there. Touch will outright kill you though if you don't stop at a certain point. Experimentation is required for the two if you want to see what is the best benefits out of the two following weapons for the build. Now for heavy, any arc weapon is available here, but if you want something plain and simple to use, then the Swarm from Zavala is a great machine gun to own. I have the old adept version of the weapon with bottomless grief and one for all, and it does fairly well against mini bosses and bosses. If you're new and you want something consistent, then the following one once available is great to own, as this purple has now been upgraded with much more better perks to pick. If not, then the hot head from Zavala is also a great choice, while Seventh Seraph Sword from Zer is another fantastic machine gun to use and own when available. With the case of builds that utilize low health for max gain, there aren't as many for us to pick and choose from besides the one we currently got. Touch of Madness and Tommy's Matchbook are the only weapons in game currently that offers the ability to weaken our health for increased damage. And while they are good for builds that use healing to circumvent their issue, not many will risk doing the opposite of that. This is why my build as of now has taken a different pathway that many people may or may not enjoy. Getting your health down to critical and then using our fragments such as touch of recharge and instinct to get fast ability regen and the ability to jolt others near you is both crazy and highly risky player style to try out to most content. But not only that, it's also how this all builds into the super as well which I found very applicable here. With Storm Dancer's Brace active, if we were to get our ascending amplitude up to times 10 for example, that's a 100% super damage increase. But that's not all, adding the Thunderous Retort Seasonal mod to this as well will provide a 30% on top of what we currently have, so ultimately this can make the build a lot more worthwhile, not only in its base form, but also in its super form as well. While you're at it, having the Electric Armor, Shock and Arm, and Lightning Strike Twice mods which are all seasonal will allow the build to shine even more, even in Legend tier content if you dare. It has its pros which when applied correctly can do some amazing things. But like a lot of builds that pose significant risk to users' health, the following is near impossible to use outside of the standard and legendary content. In no place can this be used in master or GM content, as it is not capable of such damage difference being applied. However, raids and dungeons are applicable as long as the activity allows users to control the area fairly well, with cover included. It's overall not an appealing build for those that don't like these types of playstyles, but it is an appealing setup for those who like to test the boundaries of what builds Destiny can do. It's not so much challenging, but different to what we normally experience, and for that, I recommend you to try this at least once in your game time. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below, while at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.